Yeah, I clicked on the wrong button here on my end. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Ned. You should be able to hear me now. Hopefully you're having a good day or a good Monday and hopefully you had a good weekend. Um, perfect. Wonderful. Yeah, so today might be actually the, the, the fastest or shortest Caspio Live we've ever had. Uh, I received this uh, request to um, do a live implementation of our how-to article, which is creating approval workflow with email notification, which simply has, when you see an email, you have two buttons that you can approve or decline when the request comes in. And based on your selection there uh, in the table, it writes as either declined or approved. Uh, so it's, it's a nice and seamless workflow without having to log into Caspio. Well, you might still have to log in if you have the application authenticated, but if it's public facing, uh, then you can quickly just approve that item or decline that item. So it's, it's a very straightforward, as I said, tutorial um, that requires one table. So I'll just give you a quick live example of it really quickly. Imagine you have a submission form that needs to be approved. And in this use case, again, I basically copied everything from that how-to where you can submit a PTO request. So you select your date or dates. Uh, let's say you want a full day requested by Sally Smith, and then we hit submit. It goes to my email, so I'll just open up my email very quickly and wait for that to come in. Obviously, I need to work on my padding. Uh, so the request came in from Sally Smith, and all I need to do from here is just click approve or decline. If I approve that request, request has been processed. And then if I go back to my table, I should be able to see that submitted and confirmed. So Sally Smith has been processed, and it was approved. On the flip side, if I click decline, then you will be able to see the status as declined in the table. So simple little workflow. Uh, it's not overly complicated. Really, the two important fields that you will need to have in your table are the status field and is process, which is a checkbox and a simple text 255. So if you have a similar workflow with, like mine with PTO requests, uh, you need to have a checkbox field and you need to have a status field which has text 255. So these are the two important fields that you will need to have in your table. Let me just bring back my... YouTube Live, all right. And for my data pages, everything begins with the submission form. Okay, so we're gonna edit that so you can see what it looks like. It's linking back to my requests table as my data source. Now, if you were authenticating, you can easily apply your authentication to that data page, but I made everything public facing, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, we're gonna hit next. And then include the fields that you need to have on your submission form. For me, it's gonna be date of request, you need to, how many hours you want to request, and requested by. Again, requested by, if you're authenticating the form, you could hide that field and just stamp the user's ID into the request table. But I just made it open as a text field visible so that we can just type the name. And then hit next, hit next. And then here, once you enable your notification email, because when I submit that form, I need to notify maybe my department manager or an admin level user of that request submission. You could also have um, maybe even, because right now I'm using a notification field, as you can see in my messaging options, I'm using notification. But you could have here an email as well and use a virtual field to select the email based on the cascade. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have a department field that's maybe a hidden field because that employee will belong to a certain department and you could have a a virtual field underneath that and just use a cascading selection and then you cascade to select the email based on the parent field so if this was department sales it would select the email for that sales department which would in this case be maybe a VP of sales or somebody else and then you use that virtual field inside oops, let me go back inside the email field and you select your virtual field here which will now link to that vp of sales so based on the department we know who to send that request email to i didn't do that so we we're just simply using a notification email and then here on the next screen i'm using my own work email to get the request my subject and then from the how to all you need to do is copy a snippet of code that's at the very bottom 
to copy that. I'm not going to paste it in my actual example, but you would click on the source button. Okay. I just simply added requested by, and I added my field here requested by as a parameter at the very top so that I know who the request came from. Okay. Was it Sally? Was it Ken? Was it somebody else? So that's at the very top. And then directly underneath that, I have that code that I just copied. And what the code is doing is basically going to a link, which we're going to create here in just a second. I'll show you how that was done. But this URL is going to be used to receive the information that's passed when we click on each of those two buttons. And all we're doing is when you click on the approve, okay, you're sending the request ID and you're sending the status approved. If you click on approve, if you click on decline, again, you're still sending the request ID from that submission form, and you're also sending the status equals decline, which is right over here. Okay. So that's just built in to the URL. Let me see if I can make this a little bit easier for you guys to see. Yeah, this is better to, to visualize. So here's my destination URL. RID, which is generated when the submission form is submitted, you're, you're basically uh, creating a new request ID, which is passed in the URL, and you're passing the status approved if you click on approve. If you click on decline, again, you're still passing the request ID, but you're passing the status equals decline. So depending on which button you click, you're going to pass a different status. Okay. Uh, and I think that's all there is to the submission form. Let me just save my changes. Here. Actually, I should not have done that. I should have just said cancel because now my buttons won't display. So what I need to do is click on HTML and then hit finish to save. Okay. So that's the submission form, right? We get the notification email with two buttons. And now we have a details data page. I'm going to hit edit. We have a details data page that's going to receive that information. So based on the same table, filter data, and you have to receive that request ID, right? Because we need to know who are we approving that request for, for which request ID. Okay. And then is process by default is going to be blank. You'll see here in just a second. Okay. So it's going to be blank in the beginning when you receive that request. And then a request ID is simply receiving the external parameter RID, which it came from that submission form. Okay. And then on the details page, once you include the fields that you need, I'm only including my status and is process. So now on the details view, you are receiving the status if it was approved or declined. And you're also flagging this as checked because you want to process that request. So you want to check that item upon submission. Last thing here on the footer page or inside the footer, we have a simple script that simply submits the details page when the request is received. So it just auto submits that details page for you so that you don't have to click on update or click on submit manually. And that's what the script is doing. And that is also provided in the how to. So up here, if you scroll up, there's a little bit of code up here. Uh, that just submits the form when it loads. All right, let me hit next to see if there's anything else. And all I've done here is eventually I would embed this into my web pages, and I just have a landing page that shows my confirmation once the de uh, details page auto submits. Okay, so I'm basically redirecting the user to my HTML data page, which is confirmation. And all this one has is a simple confirmation that says, request has been processed. So now once you finish developing that details page, this one here, you deploy it, you grab the URL link, copy it, and then you go back to your submission form and you replace inside that code. You are going to just paste that link at the very beginning here, right before you pass the parameter. And you do that in two different places so up there and also for the decline. So it's the same link that takes the user to that details data page. And all it is is really auto submits the details page, but in the process, you flag the item as processed and you also now submit the status if it was approved or declined because it was passed from here. You can pass multiple pieces of information. It doesn't have to be just two items if that's uh, the need that you have, okay? So again, very, very simple implementation. I'll just demo that one more time so that you can see. And this time I'll just hit decline. So we'll just say 
maybe I need to request four hours by Kelly Jones. I will hit submit. So we'll just wait for the email to come in. Again, the email is coming to me because I use my email as the notification email. And it just came in. And Kelly Jones, I hit decline. Oh, it did so on my other screen. So here is my request has been processed. And then back in my table, we should be able to see submitted as declined. And it's been processed. All right. So again, as I mentioned, nothing, hopefully this was exciting. I don't know. You might have a need for something like that um, in your workflows. Uh, but as I said, it was going to be a very quick and short Caspio Live today uh, just to showcase um, a workflow, you know, that could save you some time so you don't have to manually click on the drop down or radio button to approve or decline something uh, in your application. Uh, is it possible to send this code into an email that sends via trigger or only from a data page? You should be able to send this using a trigger as well. I don't see why not. Uh, because you still can customize. Uh, you can still customize the email, the content of the email itself. So if I send the email. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason why you can't. So if I. Uh, go back to my example here. I already copied all that text. Let me copy it again. Paste it here. I will just remove this text. This is not needed. Right? And then um, if my memory serves me well, there is a way to convert this to HTML. So when it gets sent out, you actually view the buttons. So you want to just convert that to HTML so that you can see the button itself when the email is sent. And you can also insert parameters too. There's no reason why you can't. Okay, but in order for me to, to insert the parameter, you have to use a table here. So you have to select the data from a specific table. Um, this is from the inserted table, but you can grab your other tables here as well. Um, the insert requested by. So yeah, definitely something that's possible. Um, let me take a look at my second question. Can you send artwork to customer JPEG? Then the customer can approve the art. Um, I don't think that you can. Let me let me think for a second. Uh, I don't see how you can add an image inside the body of the email. Uh, you might be able to. I don't know if you render it as HTML. It might pick it up from the email. I haven't tried that myself, believe it or not. But if I go to my data page, so we won't save anything here. But if we go to the data page on the submission form, I mean, I'm thinking about it. If I were to add an image source tag, why not image source tag equals and then the reference to the image, which can also include directly from Caspio. So if I answer, if I had an image field, I might be able to display that as an image. And underneath that, you have approve or reject or something like that. I unfortunately don't have an image here. But if the image was submitted via that form, I don't see why not, because it's going to be stored in a the table. Then you should be able to render that as the actual image in the email. So it would be a reference to the image file. And then you can play around with the width, you know, style equals uh, with maybe 300 pixels. And you might have like border and text alt, alt text uh, to that image. And then underneath that, you have approve or reject. So yeah, try it. I think it will work. Just theoretically thinking about it, it should work. Yeah, you bet. Uh, let me see. My other question, this could be good in an insurance or other business that could trigger a commission statement, correct? Using the logic and triggers. We can do that here in Cal I don't see why not. I mean, everything that you just mentioned, I think that it's possible, especially in the in insurance industry. Um, yeah. But you can, you can send it out from both the trigger and from the destination here when you're sending emails from the data page. So both places will work, and it's very helpful. You can even have a third button if you want <laughs> to do something other than approve or reject. So you can have many buttons in that email. I like the idea of having an image, though. That was pretty interesting uh, to approve artwork or something like that. 
But yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, the request came in from somebody via email to me. They wanted to see a live implementation of this how-to tutorial, so I decided to just quickly show you how this works. And it's not, even though it might look intimidating, when you look at the how-to, uh, it, it looks like a daunting task to create something like this. It's really not. If you read through it, it took me about five minutes to set this up. It wasn't bad at all. Uh, but I didn't have to adjust anything. I read through it, and I followed exactly. Let me just see if I, if I got stuck somewhere. Yeah, so just when you're creating the submission form to select the proper input fields to show in the PTO request form, just don't include fields uh, is processed and status. You don't need to include those on the submission form. Those are included in the details page when you're actually approving it. So you might get stuck with that. Let me see if there's anything else that I encountered that kind of made me question the tutorial somewhat. But and it says here in the data page data source, enable authentication. As you can see, you don't have to, but it almost seems like you have to enable authentication, but you don't necessarily have to. So just keep that in mind as well, um, because I built it all using public facing data pages. Uh, let me see, by manipulating the HTML, it looks like adding a hyperlink with download would work for attachment. Yeah, you could also have a hyperlink to download. If you want to download the image, like to go back to the previous example about artwork, you could download the image as well. But I don't know if you want to do that because now you're getting away from your email. I'd rather keep everything in email. Or you can have a link to the image on the web so you can open up a new tab on the browser to see the image and then go back to your email to approve or decline. Or you can do an inline image, which, is, which would be my preference, I think, just to see the image directly in the email. Uh, and then just be able to approve or uh, decline that image. It's a good comment. Uh, and you can adjust the way the buttons look, right? In H yeah, you can adjust, manipulate the buttons in any way, Brie. So it's possible to add more padding, um, border radius, just about anything. Correct. I need to investigate a little bit more. I mean, I. I'm not trying to overpromise, but I, you should be able to. But Outlook, for some reason, is rendering my buttons uh, without the padding. So I kind of need to see why that's happening. Uh, because right now, it's not giving me any padding around my text inside the buttons. But with Gmail, I didn't have that issue. With Gmail, it rendered the way it was rendered in Caspia. All right, let me take a look at my other comment here. Will the authentication stamp the user who actually... Yes, yeah. So that's another thing that I want to go back to is... I was manually typing in my name. A request came, so I came over here and I just wrote my name down in this field. I left it exposed. But if this was authenticated, then you can just hide that field and use the authentication method to stamp the user that's logged in Okay, when they submit that request. But, oh, you're saying that when I, when I approve the request on the details page. Yeah, so it's the same thing there as well. So if I come back to my, let me cancel that. If I come back to my approval, because it's all based on the same table, you would have one more field in this table approved by. I don't, oh, process by here. You can use process by field, right? So then on the details page, if you include the uh, process by field or process by ID, you can make that field hidden and use the authentication method. I don't have it listed here because the data page is not authenticated. But if you were authenticating that data page, Yes, it would stamp the user that approved or declined that request in the details page. Also a very good question. Let me know if you have any other questions before we uh, end today's Caspio Live. Again, I really want to thank everyone for Coming back to these live streams, I hope you guys are finding them beneficial for your own use cases. As you can see, I took on that request from somebody that sent me an email. I'm not going to mention any names, but I um, wanted to show you that if you do have any suggestions and you just send me a quick email, I can bring that into our live streams and show you how it's done. If you have something that's specific to your own use case uh, and I find it you know, worthwhile and I think it's very useful for other people to see. I will let you know via email if it makes sense to 
bring that into the live stream or, you know, contact our support team to get more assistance. If it's something that requ uh, requires a lot of effort, something that I don't have time for, and it's um, very heavy on coding, that we might, I might have to um, politely reject that request. <laughs> How often is the help section updated? I always find new tips and tricks that I just stumble across. Um, yeah, so every week I believe we release a new tech tip. Uh, we've released quite a few by now, actually. If you go to tech tips here on the left, which a lot of our customers find helpful. So if you go to tech tips, um, these are all a little bit advanced that could enhance the usability of your applications. Well, they range from basic to advanced, depending on the tech tip, I guess. Like, for example, submitting multiple data pages using one button. I can't think of a use case. There's probably a use case for something like that. <laughs> to submit maybe to multiple tables when you submit, when you click on one button. Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I can't think of a use case right now. But very helpful to make your applications a little bit more dynamic and to improve the user experience from your application user perspective. Um, very helpful. Uh, is there a date on a tech tip so I can stay updated on the newest ones? So we usually, we usually send an email. A good question, we send an email to all customers as soon as a new tech tip is released. So if you're subscribed to our emails, you should receive one um, with the tech tip. Otherwise, I don't know how else you will get notified. I can, let me check. I, I know who you are. I can check uh, in our CRM to see if that's the case, okay? And then I'll let them know. And I'll also find out how often are these tech tips released. But if my memory serves me well, I think it's every week that these go live. Um, but I'll check for you, okay? In our database. Well, always, it's always my pleasure to do the live streams for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for keeping coming back. Uh, it means a lot to me because without you coming back, there will be no live stream. So, <laughs> uh, and if you do have uh, get a chance to like the video to help us spread the uh, spread the uh, uh, the live stream to others, that will be helpful uh, to us as well. So, if you remember, if not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, hopefully, I'll just see you guys next Monday. I don't have a topic in mind for next Monday. So just hang on. Uh, you'll be able to see it on our website soon, today or tomorrow, uh, with the latest topic. Unless I receive somebody via email. So if you do beat me to it and you send me an email, I may actually consider using that in our live stream. So Thanks, Bree. Stephanie, thank you so much. Glad you find them helpful. And everyone else, you know, from Phil to everyone else that is a returning Caspi Alive, enthusiast thank you so much i will go ahead and keep the chat running for another minute or two i will end the live stream so if you have any more comments and feedback just let me know in the chat window and i'll respond back go niners yeah hopefully there are no cowboys fans here <laughs> uh not gonna say nothing more to that um, but yeah go niners for sure <laughs> it's just sports you know Better team one, I guess. Anyway, uh, thanks for that. That was a good laugh. I will end the live stream now, and I will see you guys uh, next Monday. Thank you so much once again, and have a good day and good rest of the week.